gonna I'm gonna run through the while we wait for the next person to sh- show up. I was talking with Richard early in the show about uh, the number of states that had an increase in uh, migration, and one of the things that we're seeing is a a change in the way in which people are making their decision uh, about migrating. But one of the things I thought that was really interesting about this is. That it, it used to be the case that only about 20% of Americans were moving annually. And, and, and what they mean by moving is moving from state to state, moving from one state to another state. Um, it used to be the case that if you moved, it wasn't, they didn't necessarily consider it a move because you were moving within the same city, county, or even really state because some states are small enough that they can, you know, they can move within that state and still work in the same place. I, th- I start thinking about places like Delaware, uh, Rhode Island, um, even even places like Maryland to a certain extent. Um, but what we saw was a massive uptick in people who are willing to migrate between states. Huge, huge number of people willing to do that. And so I want to run through at least the top 10. We covered the top four, which was Florida, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina. Okay, and so then after that, number five, Tennessee uh, with 81,000. Georgia with 81,000, just a little bit less than, than Tennessee. And then Arizona. I think we talked about Arizona a couple weeks ago. Uh, Goldman Sachs was predicting uh, that Phoenix is going to be one of the cities that sees a 25% decrease in market value on the housing there in Phoenix. Uh, so that's an interesting one. So people have moved into Phoenix, but yet they're still predicting – uh, that they're going to see a massive crash in the uh, real estate valuation. Uh, right after that, we've got Idaho, uh, and and this is this is where it's a steep drop off because with Arizona, you had almost seventy one thousand people moving to Arizona. The next one down is Idaho with only twenty eight thousand people, Alabama with twenty eight thousand, Oklahoma with twenty six thousand, uh, Nevada with twenty thousand, Arkansas with eighteen thousand. And Montana was 16,000. I think we count there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's the top 13. Uh, if we keep going, Utah at 12,000. Delaware with 11,000. That one's surprising. And then Maine with 11,000. So that's the top 15 right there. <clears throat> on, the, on the bottom end, what, what was interesting is there's, uh, there's states that even though they saw a decrease in the number of people moving there, they still saw an uptick in population, but a very minuscule one. So like you you have places like North Dakota that lost 2,700 people, but they still saw an uptick in uh, population change overall of 0.2%. Um, so there's there's weird anomalies in there. Um, come on, Alan. Hey, man. I'm, I'm going through some uh, some Census Bureau data here right now. Uh, one of the other ones I thought that was really weird. Sorry, are you not jumping on? Well, yeah. Oh, come on. Sure. Yeah. Um, one of the ones I thought that was really really weird is Hawaii. Yeah, grab that grab that headset right there. Um, Hawaii saw a 05 percent decrease in population, and over fifteen thousand people actually left Hawaii. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm some new Census Bureau data came out from 2022. Um, and probably not surprising to you, Texas was number two as far as like influx of people. Yeah, I understand. Um, over two hundred and thirty thousand people in twenty twenty two. Yeah, one, a one point six percent change in population density in the state of Texas. The only one better than that was Florida at one point nine percent, and they got over three hundred eighteen thousand people. Wow. Uh, yeah, nuts. Um, but the one I thought was weird was Hawaii. The Hawaii lost over 15,000 people and 0.5% moved out of there. I, I have to imagine some of that is affordability and opportunity. Yeah, Hawaii is very expensive. To it's, live it's expensive and there's just not a whole lot of industry there. While it's a beautiful place and a lot of people like to go visit, I can't imagine it being I, – like, I, I actually have a friend that moved there. It was either 21 or 22. But she was an attorney. Like, she can really work from just about anywhere. Um, and, and her firm offered to you know, let her work wherever she wanted to. Nice. And so she was like, well, I've always wanted to live in Hawaii, so I'm going. And, like, you know, that's you one go. of the, you know, and if that's what you want, you know, knock yourself out. There you go. So, well, man, you just, you just got back from a fun trip. Yeah. 
I did a cruise to Mexico. Was that your first cruise? Oh no, I've been on many, 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 many. Okay, many, many. Have you been on a, on a Mexico cruise before? Um, no, I I stayed in Mexico for a while. I, I flew down there with my ex, and we rented a really nice place down there, and we traveled around Mexico. But this time it was a cruise. But her and I did bunches of cruises over about a two year period. We went all over the world. Okay, and we usually went on smaller cruise lines like Windstar. That's a lot more exclusive. And oh. Yeah. I've never even heard of that one. Are they smaller boats? Um, yeah, yeah, they're quite a bit smaller. Okay, but they're awesome. What's 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 what do you think is the big difference other than the size of the boat? Um, the personalized service, larger staterooms, oh, okay. better food. I mean, everything about it was, but it costs quite a bit more money too. Do they sail out of out of uh, Galveston? No, they don't. Where usually, do they sail out of? Usually, you've got to fly down to Florida. Um, where else? I know in California, I guess. So, okay. Yeah. I'm going to be looking into this. That sounds intriguing to Wind me. Wind Star is incredible. Yeah. And I had such a great time on their cruises. It was awesome. Have you ever done an Alaska one? No, I have not. I've heard, uh, Kevin's been on one. I've not been on one, but I, I've heard they're awesome. Um, and Alaska is one of those places I haven't been. So I, 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 it seems like a boat might be a fun way to, to see that state. I think it would be. Yeah. I was, well, at the right time of year. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> I, I flew into there once and, and got stuck there for a while yeah, yeah. well for for people and you've been on the show before but for people that don't know what remind everybody what you do um, i'm in the solar business my company is texas energy saver i'm a service disabled veteran owned company um we do solar systems um i'm we do residential and we do business now i'm working on some government contracts because oh, really service disabled veteran owned businesses get uh you know get head of the line bids on contracts and stuff so i'm I'm working on a couple of pretty large bids for contracts with the Department of Defense. That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> so, like, like solar projects for, like, government facilities? Yes. Dude, that's yes. awesome. Yeah, yeah, because there's some places they really need it, and they're building new military bases in these places, and uh-huh. the uh, the infrastructure just can't handle it. Yeah. Well, with uh, – with, and I want to talk about solar, but I, I'm in – have you heard some of the stuff that happened over the last weekend with Montana and – all that. The balloons and stuff? Right? Well, there was the balloons, but then they shut down airspace over Montana and I think North Dakota. They shut it down? Yes. Over some, what did they call them? U- UFOs? No, they weren't UFOs. They, were. they called them something else. Well, that was the thing is they did like a press briefing where the White House secretary said, these are not aliens. And then so everybody's, the whole meme was like, okay, the government said they're not aliens, so it must be aliens. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but, but yeah, it was, it, they were basically unidentified objects. And uh, I, I saw uh, some reports from Dan Crenshaw that were saying, like, here's what we know is some of these objects were so small, it was really difficult for our radar to pick them up. It's not that they were moving so fast, it's that they were really small. And so we couldn't see them. Um, but that, and they were pretty high, um, but they weren't balloons. And so they like that's that's pretty much the information that we have, but we do know that they shut down airspace over Montana, and I think North Dakota. Montana, I know for sure, but I don't. I, I now think that's curious. Why would they shut down airspace? Well, because we've, we've I, had a lot of sightings. In, in, well, yeah, the in, balloon thing was freaking yeah. people out already. So, yeah. well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've got some serious doubts about a whole lot of that because I know what they feed us is a whole lot of bull about ninety percent of the time. So yeah, well, the and the other, I mean, like I don't know if you, I mean, like whether or not you trust Dan Crenshaw or not. I mean, like I think he seems to be a pretty upstanding congressman, and he's a former SEAL. Yeah, um, yeah. But he he was saying the deal with the balloon was one of the reasons they didn't shoot shoot it down was because they knew what it was and they'd already shut down the data stream. So they basically had hacked it because the, apparently China had tried this before, and they talked about that. Like they'd had other balloons come in under the Trump administration and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but President Trump said that never happened. Well, yeah, so like that's kind of weird. Yeah, I know it is because um, they're making up excuses why. When I, I even heard in like office is a little bit inept, but I I think it was was it Mattis who was in charge of the Department of Defense at that time. Anyway, I think it was I think it was an interview with Mattis where he was saying, "Yeah, we didn't tell Trump about it because he didn't need to know." Oh, okay, I didn't hear that part. I I'd heard that and I was like, "Well, that seems kind of weird." <laughs> <laughs> like, why wouldn't you tell the president? Like, yeah. if anybody that needs to know, 
what's yeah, going you, on. Yeah, you would think. Um, but I, I also imagine Plausible there's... Plausible deniability. Well, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. Like I also imagine there's quite a bit of stuff that doesn't come across his desk. You know, like It's like, well, that's, oh, not, yeah. that's not important. He doesn't need to know that. Yeah. But I would imagine like a Chinese balloon trying to you know get data from the U.S. government, that would probably reach the top of the list. I would imagine. But, but what's puzzling is why they would let it fly all the way across the United States yeah. and get out over the water before they shot it down. Now, their excuse was, well, we didn't want falling debris or something. Sure, you know, and yeah. There's not that much debris involved there. In a but, balloon. <laughs> but, but, but a balloon that's there for a reconnaissance, for gathering data about our missile sites and things like that. Yeah. No, we don't, we don't let that fly over the United States. No. I know that myself. I mean, I, I've seen... When I was in the military, it was funny, as I know, this story never got back to the United States, but I've seen planes that were foreign try to fly over a, a United States aircraft carrier, and Ooh. we shot it down before it got there. We yeah. warned them, but then we shot them down. Yeah. Because you don't fly over a U.S. warship. No. You just don't do it. So, I mean, that's, that's a, it's, a, it's a sign of aggression. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for sure. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that whole thing with the balloons and stuff was pretty crazy, but I think it was a distraction. Oh, probably. I, I, th- I, I tend to think most things are. Look at the other things that happened in this same time period, like Hunter Biden that finally admitted that laptop was his, and there's a few other stories that came out, and I think they didn't want us paying too much attention to it. So they had to have a sensationalized story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a story of convenience probably then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And the, the, the what and what's the, what, there's a, there's a term for that, right? I mean, um, what do they call it? Where you're trying to distract somebody so they're not paying attention to what's going on over here. It's, I mean, yeah. I I can't think of the term. I can't think of it off the top of my. But there's head. there's like a there's like a military or like a, a espionage term. It's not subterfuge, and I can't think of it. No, it's probably because I haven't had dinner yet. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm I'm low on calories right now. I had dinner and a good workout today, so my brain <laughs> my brain's already on on just you know yeah idle. Yeah, well, def- I mean, definitely check that out and let, yeah. let let me know what you think because the the whole like when I when I heard that they shut down airspace, I was like, whoa. Yeah, that's 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 a little out there. We don't just shut down airspace because there was an unidentified flying object. You know? Yeah, well, I do I do know that they engaged fighter jets. In the in the area, so that, I mean that could be. I mean, it's just safer. Like when you like like clear the area, right? Like, so fighter jets aren't shooting down Americans in Cessnas. Um, but you know that still, it's like it's a very aggressive move to like just like hey, nope, nope, we're done, we're done. Nobody's flying except for the geese. Wow, but I'm convinced that most of those stories are are a distraction. Um, that train incident's very unfortunate because there was a lot of very deadly chemicals on that. Oh, you're train. talking about the spill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard about that. And the spill, and there were people in the railroad that knew the system wasn't working well and was warning um, the organization that hey, there's going to be a derailment, a bad one, if we don't change this, this, and this. And yeah, they didn't, and there was, you know, and mm. they've had to evacuate large areas because the chemicals that spilled are very deadly. For sure, yeah. Well, man, is there is there anything uh, interesting happening, like incentive wise, uh, with with solar panels and in any? I, I know that like, I know that there's incentives for the solar panels. Are they also offering those for like home batteries and generators as well, or is it just the panels that they're offering these programs for? Um, we we give incentives on the whole deal, whatever okay. it is, the whole shooting <laughs> match. And uh, I think you and I talked earlier about. A nice little incentive that uh, you wanted to share with. Yeah, if you if you want to if you want to plug that one, man, we'll, you can plug it, and then we'll keep plugging it. I mean, I, if you're ready to pull the trigger on it, <laughs> sure, go sure. ahead. So, um, anyone that calls us that and um, and gets us to install a solar system, uh, we'll give you a, an extra five hundred dollar cash rebate. Okay, and uh, and then we'll do the same for your show. Yeah. So, like, basically, they need to reach out to you, mention the homeowner show. That's it. And they'll get 500 bucks knocked right. off the system. Re- yep. That's a fantastic deal. And they can either get it knocked off the system or we'll pay them cash $500. There you go. Hey, yeah, either one's mean. good. That's right. Either way you look at it, it's yeah. funny. You know? Will you do it in silver bars? <laughs> <laughs> I own quite a bit of those, well, but I'm not giving them up, you know. <laughs> Absolutely not. You and me both, man. I don't, I don't want to give mine up either. 
Uh, yeah. there, there's been some interesting things going on. I don't know if you watch a U.S. debt clock, but if if you go to that page of usdebtclock.org, um, you know, it shows all the numbers going crazy on the debt and all this and all the factors that are involved in it. Yeah. But if you go down to the right lower corner and you, you'll you see a button that says precious metals and you click on it, mm-hmm. it goes to a page that tells you the value of gold and silver and... Oh, and, the real-time value. Yeah, and platinum and all that. Um, the strange thing is for the last several years, it's always been a very trumped up value mm-hmm. um, the silver was always around six or seven thousand. I mean, um, I'm sorry, sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars per ounce. And I thought I mean, that's gold. No, that's silver. Silver. Yeah, but we're able to go down and for twenty four dollars an ounce buy the silver. So okay, why, I see what you're saying. So why were they making the value that high on the U.S. debt clock? Well, because it supported what they were telling us that our money was worth. Oh. Yeah. And with gold, they literally had it at one point set at like $34,000 an ounce. Oh, my gosh. When we know for $1,700, $1,800 an ounce, we could buy gold. Yeah. Um, I heard a lot of speculation about what that's what that all is about. But from what I understand, it was mainly for them to be able to prop up the numbers to look good for the U.S. dollar. Whew. But here's what's real interesting. Recently, I went on there and saw where those numbers had dropped significantly, and now they're at zero. What's at zero? Silver and gold. The value of silver and gold uh, per dollar is zero. It says zero. That's crazy. It is crazy. But you know what? It's a good thing because that means they're working on a new money system. They're working on revaluating the system, Mm -hmm. which we've been hearing in different capacities and different theories about this for years. Right. Um, because the U.S. dollar is, it's, it's pretty much worthless, you know, as far as what, you know, what it's, what its value is. I was going to say, if anybody wants to sell me their silver and gold, <laughs> no, zero, I'll buy it, man. I'll, I'll give you all my cash right now. <laughs> yeah. Hand it over. Well, I keep all my extra money in silver and gold. Yeah. I even in the, as far as the banks are concerned, I keep uh, my bank account balances lower than my credit card balances until I'm ready to pay off the credit cards. Mm-hmm. And I, I do that because when you go in, sign up for a bank account, if you read that paperwork carefully, somewhere in there it says that money no longer belongs to you when you deposit it in the bank, but they'll allow you to use it as long as they're solvent. Yeah. And you saw what happened in Canada. They exercised their right to confiscate bank accounts because of the trucker protest. Oh, yeah, And they that's took right. a lot of money from a lot of people. And recently in the news, not in the mainstream, I'm pretty sure, Bank of America was confiscating deposits. There were people depositing money in the Bank of America, and it w- these deposits were not showing up. And there's a lot of people, financial advisors and things that I listen to and, and watch online, and they said they're beginning that confiscation because if you do a little bit of homework, you'll find out all the major banks have filed bankruptcy. Uh-huh. So they're literally insolvent right now. And if your money's in there, it's at risk. Yeah. And um, I certainly don't want to give financial advice, but I know that I don't have my money in any more of the large banks anymore. Uh, no, I, I keep as much out of it as I can, for sure. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind of frightening. The good thing about the, what we saw in the U.S. debt clock is that um, the new monies will be valued in silver and gold. Mm. And that means that the silver and gold prices are going to go through the roof before long and all that that we're sitting on is going to be very valuable um, yeah, I mean, I've heard I've heard a lot of people speculate that gold's going to go to ten thousand dollars an ounce, which I don't think is unreasonable. I don't either. I, don't I mean, either. so uh, we we know that it's coming, but we just don't know when that is. Right. You know, and you've heard of bricks. Bricks is. Um, I don't think I have, but okay, I know what okay. bricks are. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> B R I C S is Brazil. Um, oh gosh. Brazil, Russia, India, China. And anyway, but it's it's uh, that B R I C S is is an acronym for five different countries. But now there's there's probably fifty countries that have gotten on board with that. And what BRICS is, it's it's an organization that is moving away from the U. There, all these countries are moving away from the U S. dollar and are right. going to gold backed <clears throat> currencies mm. to buy and trade their oil and their resources. Something that we've never seen. Yeah, because the U S. dollar has been the reserve currency, but these countries now are are no longer afraid to do that. Right. So. And a lot of people are scared because of that, that the U.S. dollar is going to become 
you know, completely useless and they're going to lose all their money. That isn't going to happen. Right. Um, there are things going on behind the scenes and they're going to be prepared to exchange money out um, a percentage of it, which I couldn't begin to tell you what that's going to be, but a percentage of your money will be given back in what the new currency is mm. when that's announced. But we know we're getting very close. These indicators with the U.S. debt clock and bricks and a whole lot of the stuff, um, there's a site out there called jasara.news, G-E-S-A-R-A.news, right. and it's all articles on gold and silver and money things going on around the world. Very informative. I watch huh. it carefully, yeah. What's interesting to me about that, I mean, like you think about a country like Brazil and Russia, I mean, because America's currency is valued basically off of Petro. Yeah. You know, but like Russia, they have a, a Petro valuation as well. I mean, like that's that's what a lot of their economy is based off of. Yeah. But so like what's gold. interesting is like they're, 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 what you're saying is they're going back to the gold and silver, the gold standard. And silver standard. Yes. Even though like they, they own like a lot of the distribution of petroleum in Europe. So yep. and I own, I yep. think I think Brazil's actually a, a petro country as well. I know Venezuela is. Uh, and eventually the value of every country is going to be determined by their resources, which is how it should be. Sure. Oil, diamond mines, gold, silver mines, whatever, they're going to value a country based on on those factors. And if you think about that, what what country do you think would be the wealthiest country on the planet? China has a lot of them has a lot of mines. Africa. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're, Africa. They're, they're, but Africa is the most suppressed country in the world because the powers that be have gone over there and they own the gold mines and the silver mines and the diamond mines and the resources and they basically <clears throat> push the people down into labor jobs that don't take care of them and all that. So they know that that's what it's kind of like what somebody we know is doing with Ukraine yeah, and did with Afghanistan and all the opium and stuff. So all of these stories are going to come out and the whole world's going to get a little wake up call to how and why all this worked out the yeah. way that it did. But the good news is, is it's, it's, it, things are going to get better and things are going to get true yeah. um, in, in how countries are evaluated and how their money is and things like that. And these countries deserve that stuff, you know, for sure. Are you? Would you be concerned? I mean, like, because of the way that you just described Africa, and this is not a political show, but like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be concerned that if we if we did that, if we started valuating countries' currencies based off of their resources, that it would open up the conversation for colonization in some of these countries that couldn't fight off bigger countries like Africa. Yes. Like you, you start looking at like Nigeria and, and and different places, you know, throughout there that like, OK, like, OK, if our currency is based off valuation, where we see the most potential is in this country and they don't have a military yeah. that can withstand us. So we're just going to go take it. And it's it's not so much the currency itself as it is the overall value of the country, meaning this country's worth 200 trillion. OK. Right. And, and so they can they're allowed to to print enough money to back that that kind of thing. So um yeah, it's going to get it's going to get very interesting. And and what I've done, and having been where I've been in the military, I've stayed in touch with a lot of pretty influential people in military circles. My bosses used to be generals and admirals, right? Um, when I worked for the state of Texas, and um, I, I get a lot of inside scoop on what's going on in the world. And it's fortunately, it's it's not as bad as it it looks. It's not nearly as bad as it looks. There's things going on behind the scenes that. Are, are going to make hold accountable a lot of people and a lot of organizations that have done wrong in this world and done wrong to other people and you know so it's it's kind of exciting it's yeah. you know you look around you and if you look at too much of it it can be disheartening because what you see looks pretty bad but I know that we are seeing what's been foretold over the years and um, we're going to see the defeat of evil literally mm, that would be amazing. Exciting. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Well, uh, let me let me see if I can get somebody else up here, but it's always good to, to check in with you, bud. Yes. And, and I, I want to let, uh, if, if people want to take advantage of that offer that you mentioned earlier, the 500 bucks off the, the solar system, how do they get a hold of you? Well, there's a few different ways. You can go to my website at txenergysaver.com uh -huh. or you can email me at alan, A-L-A-N, 
at txenergysaver.com. Okay. Or, or you can call us at 682-243-0631, and uh, we'll take care of your solar needs. Fantastic, man. I always appreciate and love getting to talk to you, man. Thanks. You're, Me too, man. You're an interesting dude. You're, you do a great <laughs> podcast. I told you that a long time ago. You, you somehow know how to ask the right questions, and we have great conversations. It's it's meant to be. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, right. Good to see you, bud. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Christy, do you want to jump up here? Come on, girl. This is your tab. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm not running after you, so you don't pay it, on them. I let him get off just in time to pay his bill. <laughs> right. I'm like, I don't know him. <laughs> it's not even my drink. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if he pays or not. <laughs> All right, you're gonna you're probably gonna want to scoot over a little bit so I can get you in the shot. That is perfect. Hmm. How you been, my friend? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Am I close enough to the? Can you hear yourself? Yeah. That's all that matters. Oh, okay. Is that, if you can, well, and I have to hear you. You too. got it. Well, yeah, you can hear me. <laughs> Doesn't help if I can only hear myself. <laughs> you can just make up the answers to the questions I'm not asking. That's... <laughs> oh man, what's been going on? I'm just working. Yeah. Yeah. We can. I mean, we. We can talk about all kinds of stuff because I know we've got we've got we, we're supposed to do like a long podcast yes. in the studio to yes. talk about everything going on at the business. We yeah. but we can talk about all that stuff too. We've tried twice it's now. Twice. You got flooded. I in. got flooded in. I can't. I couldn't leave my driveway. I, I, so you you told I didn't know that you'd moved out to a big piece of property. Yeah. So one, are there any wild animals out there? Yeah, I mean, we have a road runner. Oh really? Yeah, and I thought that was really cool because I mean you just don't but see no them coyotes. That much. I don't know. <laughs> We saw some paw prints the other day when I was walking around. I was like, is that a dog? Because we do have neighbor. I mean, we have neighbors. It's country, sure. you know, yeah. so dogs just run free. Um, and we have, like, a ton of birds. We don't have a lot of squirrels. It's really weird. Do you we not were, have a lot of trees? We have tons. The whole thing is trees. Okay. I what mean, kind of trees? Are they, are they pine? We have pine trees, pine but trees? We, have, we have oak trees, too. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a squirrel, I don't want to be in a pine tree. Well, no. I mean, who, yeah. yeah. I don't even like pine trees. Me either. They are <laughs> I the hate devil. the pine trees. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. They're great for, like, lumber. Yeah. And, like, yeah. But that's about it. Of course, it. yeah. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, the pine needles are not bad, like, in, like, the wooded part because it's it, they just fall on the ground and it's kind of, like, yeah. mulch. Yeah. So it doesn't bother me much. But the, but the other part about that that intrigued me is you said that you have a tiny home now. 570 square feet. How's that? It's good. I mean, yeah. it's just me and Daniel. You're still married, so that's yes. okay. Yeah, we're still married. We've been there a year. We're still married. Um, and But, I mean, we're a weird kind of couple anyways. Yeah. We like to do everything together. You know, if I say, I mean, just we go to the grocery store together. We Anytime anybody leaves the house, we're together. Well, so, so for, for perspective, how big was the house that you moved out of? 3,500 square feet. So you went down to like just, just under 600. Yeah. Yeah. And so how much, how much stuff did you have to get rid of? We have three storage units. Right oh, you now. didn't get rid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> we have three storage units and I use two offices at, at the office suites. Oh my gosh. For storage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, and I, I told Daniel the other day, I was like, we've got to go through these storage units. Our whole goal was to only have one. We have a big 10 by 20. Okay. Um, and then. Is this have, one on the property or are you actually paying for no, storage? No, we're actually paying for storage. Okay. Why don't you just buy like a couple of like. Because it has to be air conditioned. I mean, oh, okay. if you don't have climate control, which our storage units actually got broken into. Two of them did. What? Yeah. Did they take anything? Yeah. What did they take? We have no idea. Oh, you don't know what they took? Because I would have to unbox everything to know what was gone. But, I mean, like. Do... They caught the people that did it. They did it to, like, four different units. But they didn't find your stuff? They found some stuff, but they're, it, because I don't know what it is. Like, we just don't know what it is. So, jeez. I mean, there's like paper and so wrapping what, what and all is that the, kind of stuff on the ground. What does the storage facility do to reconcile that? Nothing. Now, honestly, the thing is, is because I'm sure we signed something. I mean, you signed like 7,000 pages. Sure, yeah. One of those things. I'm sure if we had, like when we used to have our homeowner's insurance, it probably would have covered that. Okay. But now that we're on the property, my parents carry the coverage. It's actually my parents' property. Okay. So, um, but... N- we're the only ones that live out there. So they have a house. It's supposed to be inheritance for us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So right now it just makes more sense for them to keep it until. Yeah. 
something happens to them. Huh. So, yeah. So what, what has been, because I know, I know the tiny house thing is still a big trend. Yeah, and ours isn't the traditional tiny house. It's not like the ones where you, you like put it on. A, it's not on a trailer. It's on a slab. Okay. It actually was a metal building that um, when Daniel worked for Mueller, um, they used to put a building up inside uh, the NRG. Like, oh, like a display. Li- yeah, at the oh. livestock show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And so they would put a, bi- a, a building up so you could see all the components of the building, how it worked and everything. And um, my mom bought it. Because they don't want to take it home. But yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, Mueller's like done with it. They don't They don't really want to take it back down and all that. So, so she, I, she got a pretty good deal? Yeah. She got a really good deal on it. My dad had his workshop. Okay. And, and you guys converted it? Yeah. Because, I mean, we were just thinking about it. We're like, okay, Kaylee, what, Kaylee's in her second year at Texas State now. So, you know, Kaylee's off to college. So yeah. it's, it, we don't need 3,500 square feet. Sure. I, well, <laughs> Except for the, the, house, the house I'm designing is like 7,000 square feet. So I'm pretty sure Daniel's going to use this against me now. Because every time I'm like, wait, what if we add this? And he's like, Christy, we don't need that much house. We don't need that much house. And yeah. I'm like, but I, I, want it, I want the property to be a place where people can come and stay weekend. They don't, I mean, I, yeah. I just want it to be a, a cool place. So how, mu- how much did it cost for you guys to convert that workshop? Well, we're still doing it. Okay, so it's still in progress. <laughs> yeah, like I don't have backsplash because I can't. It's livable. It's just not finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have bathroom and all that. I mean, okay. which, I mean it had a full bathroom already oh, out there. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't... We had to put flooring in it, and we had to do, like, sheetrock walls and okay. stuff like and that. And if you don't want to tell me numbers, that's fine. But I was just curious, like, thus far, like, what you've... I don't know. We've probably spent... Five thousand dollars. That's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, we had to reframe the whole inside because yeah. it's a metal building, so you have to have something to and attach. put wood in there. Yeah, but, yeah. And uh, that was. During when, like, you know, wood prices were really crazy. Yeah. Um, And then we had to sheetrock everything. We've got trim, base cabinets. I have countertops. I mean, some of it is, like, like one of the construction projects I did, I made a mistake on the countertops on this big island. And Uh so I had to buy them. Oh. What is this thing? Hi. (laughs) Giant semi-truck just rolling down. Right through it. Um, but I had to buy new countertops for that client, and yeah. so I just used those countertops okay. in our account. So I mean, that's you know. So what do, what do you have left to do on it? Uh, backsplash. Okay. And upper cabinets. Okay. Um, I imagine you can handle the backsplash. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I can't pick something out. Are you too picky? Is that the? I can't pick it. Out. I, everything in the showroom is is so beautiful to me. Uh huh. I, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't put all of it in my house, but everything is so beautiful to me. And then it's like I found the perfect backsplash. I'm like, I found it. I found the perfect backsplash, and I contacted my vendor, and she's like, Christy, it's really, really expensive. And I was like, I'm sure it is. It's just small. I mean, it's like 18 feet long, you know, and it's just one wall. I'm like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, my cost was $15,000. Oh, my god. <laughs> and gosh. I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> like, wh- But why? Why is why is it? It was stone, so it's, it was natural, natural stone, stone okay. and it was a water jet mosaic, so they actually, like, use a water jet to cut the stone and, and put this, like, pattern into it. Okay. So. That's crazy. And then I was like, okay. That's a that crazy amount of money for. And that was my cost. Yeah. <laughs> like, <that's- laughs> that was, yeah, it was very expensive. There's no mistakes on this backsplash, <laughs> no, right? Like, like, <laughs> like, okay, maybe I don't think Daniel's going to let me spend $15 mistake. grand on that. Even like, Christy, we're not, we're not living here that long. <laughs> You're not spending that. Have, have you done, and I've, I've seen this in some nicer homes that I've, 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 I've been in. And I don't know if this is something you can do on backsplash, but I've seen on countertops where you can like under light. Oh can- yeah. Like we're like, it's sort of like an ambient light coming mm-hmm. from underneath the countertop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's called backlit. Backlit. Yeah. Can you and do that on backsplash? You can. Actually, if you look on my Facebook page, I have, um, I went to one of our granite suppliers in Austin and their, um, little kitchenette, they okay. have it backlit and they actually did. I mean, you'd have to pre-plan it because you have to have a space behind it so that you can actually put lighting there. Right. Um, but they actually did the upper cabinets in all glass, so it's all glass fronts, and then you can see the back. It's it's a honey onyx is okay. what it is. Um, and so you can see the the uh, through the glass on the fr- face of the cabinets. Huh. You can see it. It's go- absolutely gorgeous. Well, uh, when I've seen it, it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. But like my so like I look at it. So there's the, there's the yin and yang of me. Like there's the 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 pessimist and the optimist, right? The optimist is like, that's so pretty. The pessimist to me is like, what happens when the light goes out? 
Yeah, so I mean if you're if you build it smartly, you could build it so that there's some sort of an access panel. Right. You know what I mean? Like Are they, I mean I assume they're like LED strips or Yeah. Okay. I mean they're probably gonna last ten years, but yeah, it could happen. A lot of people do it on the island because it's easy to have access panels oh, that's on the smart. island. Yeah. And so if you do it if you do it in your kitchen like as a backsplash, you need to make sure you can at least access it mm. from like maybe there's a dining room on the back side of that or something. Yeah. The one, the one that I saw that was really impressive. It was an under counter light, but it, when you, it was a master bath. Yeah. And when you walked in, you it was like a button that you hit on the wall, and they were on dimmer packs, and so yeah. that would just slowly raise the light under the counter, and then on top, and it was like just this, like this honey glow that just filled the room, and I was like, where am I? I need, I need this in my house right now. I think I literally followed the rabbit down the hole. Like this is, yeah. this is. Yeah. This Definitely. is not normal. And onyx is not cheap either. Yeah? It's not cheap. I mean, it's a natural stone too, so. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's it's more of like a semi-precious stone. Are, are they, are they, is anybody doing that where it's the, um, what's the stuff that, that you always see people pouring liquid for the tables? Oh, like the resin? Resin. Yeah. Aren't they doing like resins that look like granite that, oh, have, yeah. that you can do that with? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I guess you could do that with the like, make it more like an Would onyx, like than, a more clear. I don't. I mean, I don't I know no resin idea. prices. I don't but, either. I mean, like I know those those tables aren't cheap, but they're not. Yeah. They're not. But a lot of times they're using like a live edge piece of wood, which is not cheap to get. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff is really expensive, and the resin itself is not necessarily high price. I mean, it, it's. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not something that would like you know be totally crazy expensive. For but sure. Yeah. You're paying for somebody to do something that you, most of us have no idea how to do. Right. It's not like a DIY. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have seen videos where they're like, DIY, you're going to like pour yeah. your countertops. And I'm like, mm, that's probably not as easy as I make it seem. The DIY I've seen here recently is concrete countertops. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. What's the appeal there? <sighs> I mean, I know they're durable. Durable. It's something you can do on your own. It really is. I mean, that's why I've seen it yeah. is because it shows up a lot in the DIY yeah. stuff. The only problem with it is, like, you really have to know, like, the finishing techniques so that you get a smooth finish because you don't want, like, a sidewalk finish, right. you know? I mean, they kind of brush a sidewalk so that it has, like, a rougher finish, so... I have to imagine it's, like, two times, if, if not more, heavier than, like, a regular countertop, yeah, though. that is something... Well, you could do, like, a lightweight concrete. I don't know what the difference is. They... So, with a lightweight concrete, they mix more water into it and so okay. when it, the water evaporates it's it's a lighter, it's a lighter concrete. yeah it's okay. just a lighter concrete even then i would imagine it's heavier oh, than yeah. most countertops I'm sure. yeah. i mean like so you're like your cabinets better be sturdy yeah yeah don't yeah. don't use like a ready-made <laughs> cabinet or something like it needs to be solid wood please yeah that particle board would just like yeah. buckle yeah i would imagine yeah i mean and you know green it and I mean, especially They're not now. light, but. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the granites now we're getting in a 3 cm, which is a lot thicker. What is that 3? 3 cm. What is that? So that's how thick it is. So n- most countertops are a 2 cm, and uh, it is. That's not like centimeters. Centimeters, yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So, um, but when they do the edge on the front, they make it look like it's thicker. Oh, uh, okay. So the way you can tell is when you look around the cutout for your sink, uh-huh. it'll usually be really thin. That's a 2 cm. Okay. But a lot of. A lot of people want that three C on thickness, and so they're providing that more. So that I mean, that makes it more heavier. Yeah, I can tell you why you more don't want heavier. that. Is that a is that it, a right it can, way to say it? It can be for yeah, we'll, we'll allow it. <laughs> it's the most heaviest. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's not here to make you sound smarter. So, I know, right? <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the so that that trim piece on the front of countertops mm-hmm. when they make it look thicker, mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about because. Uh, if you're going to have a roach infestation in your kitchen, that's where it's going to be almost oh. every time. It's, and I actually, so we put up a, we put up a video. There was the I'll way I'll never watch that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, it was this kitchen we were treating and they had done the trim piece like almost up against the edge of the cabinet, but there was still like a little, a little oh. seam. And we shot some stuff up in there, and the roach couldn't get out. And so he was, like, sticking his legs out trying to get out from the... Oh, my God. <laughs> and so, oh. it, like, it's... It, but, like, that's the first place we look yeah. every time. Because little, no one cleans there. Yeah. No one looks there. Yeah. Like, that's where they're going to be. Yeah, cracks and crevices anywhere. So it's like, if I'm, if I'm going to get it done now, it's like, man, I just... Just put... Make it that thick all the way... Yeah. 
around. And, and that's what, yeah, that's what you can do. Yeah. Then you don't have that little lip that comes yeah, that, over the that edge. Yeah, that beveled edge yeah. or whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's just Ooh. a hidey hole for bugs. That's all it is. Okay. <laughs> Note to everyone listening. Bugs and goo. <laughs> now everyone is going to go start checking around there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> yeah. Send, send Daniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little job for you. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like, what? No. Thankfully, he's only got 500 square feet to check. Though. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one run. <laughs> so is, is, there, is there anything that you found really challenging about moving down to that that small of a space really just trying to figure out what is essential yeah yeah because when we so when we moved last year it was right before we were leaving like we moved in january 31st february 1st we were boarding a plane to go to las vegas for a tile convention oh wow so we literally like I mean, I think we were up till like two o'clock in the morning and then we had to leave at like five to get on the plane. Ugh. And so when we got back, we didn't even have our bed set up and we got back really late. So we ended up staying in a hotel <laughs> when we got back because I was like, I'm too tired to go home and put our bed together. Like yeah. it was just all in there. Um, so, yeah, it is really just being storage, just trying to be, you know. Yeah. Like, just trying to figure out good storage ideas. And then also, like, do we really need, you know, 25 towels between the two of us? No, sure. we yeah, don't. Yeah. So, you know, you just pick your favorite towels and, and leave the other ones in storage. Did you guys get completely different appliances to fit in that space? Uh, yeah, we bought a refrigerator. Although the refrigerator we have is a, it's a full-size refrigerator. Um, and then the stove that we have, it's, I mean, it's a nice size stove. It's a regular yeah. size stove. I mean, our kitchen, the building's 18 feet wide, and so our kitchen goes from one end. It kind of does, like, a little kickback, and so okay. it goes from one end all the way to the other. So, I mean, we've got a ton of countertop space. We um, got some really nice cabinets, and, um, I mean, there's just things that you just don't think about. Like, you know, I used to buy paper towels in, like, a 25-pack, and now I buy it in a 4-pack instead because okay. I just don't have anywhere to put them. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so it, I, I've often thought about when it's just me and my wife eventually like downsizing to a smaller refrigerator because right. it's such a huge footprint in the kitchen. I can get so much more space yeah. and I don't need that much food. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and we used to have a full walk-in pantry and now we just have a 24 inch wide cabinet. It's mm-hmm. 20, you know, well, you, 20 you've inches been to deep. my house. Yeah. We haven't had a pantry in seven years. Yeah. I mean, like you don't need one. No. And I mean, ours is, it's full, it's 96 There's my wife, tall. right? We don't need a pantry. <laughs> we don't need a pantry. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Well, and you tend to not, like, keep all this stupid stuff. Like, I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've moved, and then I'm going to clean out the pantry, and I'm like, this expired before we even moved here. Like, why did we put that in a box and bring it? Yeah. 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 All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to wrap things up yep. because it's raining. Tell everybody how they can find you if they need you. Um, ExpressiveTylandStone.com. And I'm on Facebook at ExpressiveTylandStone. Instagram at ExpressiveTylandStone. Okay. TikTok at ExpressiveTylandStone. We'll, we'll still do the, easy. We'll do the We'll do the <laughs> yeah, long Yeah, we'll show. do the full one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys, everybody, for joining in. We appreciate you joining. Uh, check out everybody that we had on the show tonight. Uh, definitely check on that, that big offer from Alan. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you.